is something special. It is, if you like, the 11th man or 12th man in football. How's it going to fare here for the very first match of this year's Masters? Please welcome one of the most entertaining players of his generation. At his best, his break building is sublime. Six times a ranking event finalist, back for a fifth tilt at the Masters title, the one and only jackpot, Jack Lasowski. player who bedazzled us all at the Crucible last spring, having never previously won a match, he storms to the ultimate title. This is his fourth appearance in the Masters, the reigning champion of the world, the Belgian bullet, Luca. It is the battle of the entertainers. Expect more flair than a 1970s pair of trousers. It's Luca and Jack. So let's hand for our very first time of the Masters. I want Jack to call. It's the 50th staging of the Masters, and once again, snooker royalty has taken up residence at the Palace. Top 16 in the world, playing for the Paul Hunter Trophy, a quarter of a million pounds first prize, and a place in one of our sport's most coveted roles of honour. And it's here with the Luca world Brussell champion Luca Brussel against Jack Lazowski. Every ticket has been sold in advance for the seeing lots of the hospitality has been snapped up as well and you can understand why this promises to be a brilliant eight days. We're kind of expecting fireworks between these two, both very attacking. Let's see, it's uh, always, I think, tough starting out. First match, no one's played yet. They've been thrown into the lion's den already. Lazowski with a red to go out here. Not to be. And uh, already nil. It's absolutely packed here. A lot of anticipation about this event. Now it's underway. There always is, and it should be no different this year. It's a very intriguing opening match, though, isn't it? You heard in the studio, Jimmy and Alan, was almost unable to work out who's even favourite for it. Luca is a very marginal favourite. But whether you that's justified or not, I don't know. It's uh, going to be very interesting to see. Well, we shouldn't forget that he is world champion. It would be hard to forget how brilliant he was at the Crucible in April and May. Maybe this is the kind of scene he needs to reinvigorate his game. Yeah, he's been light on results, Six. hasn't he? He got to the Shanghai Masters final, which is another big non-ranking event, but in ranking tournaments, hasn't been past the last 16. Oh, and he's missed that one. I thought he looked a little bit nervy as he walked out. That's Look maybe understandable. It's a massive occasion. He did have a knock on this table before play. They are allowed to do that. But it's all about settling down, isn't it? Well, there's the arena, doesn't it? Look beautiful. And it's absolutely packed, as it will be all week. Well, that was middle of the pocket. Lazowski, remember, reached the semis last year. He beat John Higgins in the same for five to get there. Although, in the end, Mark Williams rather <laughs> schooled him 6 0. Well, they're certainly both very pleasing players to watch in full cry. Uh, there is absolutely no doubt about that. They're the most exciting. <laughs> players of that sort of generation below the class of 92. So we hope for a terrific game of snooker. Yes, and it's worth saying that since... Six. Because it used to be best of nine, since it went to best of 11 in the mid-90s, the most common scoreline is 6-4, and the second most common is 6-5, because, of course, all these players are so evenly matched. Seven. The winner of this match plays... The winner of tonight's match between Sean Murphy and the only debutant this year, Zhang Ander. Well, 
That's a pretty 12. tough bunch of reds. If he can, or if he could have been straight enough on the red to hold for the black. You know, he's coming in at the black at a strange angle, and uh, there aren't anything mm. in amongst the reds that are easy to pop from then on. So maybe the shot on his next colour will be significant. Thirteen. Interesting that he played up the table like that. Goodness. It's kind of skirting around the issue of getting this bunch of reds open at some point soon. It's true what they were saying when he first played in this tournament. He was a little overawed, but he's had a chance over the years to get used to this Seven. environment. This is his fifth appearance here. And that run he had last year obviously proved that he could win matches on this stage. Now has he got the shot to get the bunch open? Stunning off the right cushion into the pack at pace. Now he got too much into the cue ball there. Quite a big target, which he failed to hit. 22. Yeah, and I have a theory about this match. We probably won't see much safety, but the, the safety we do see I think will be significant because there's both such attacking players, good long potters. It's going to have to be good. Might not be much, but it's going to have to be good. Jack Lazowski. 22. <coughs> this is Brussels. Only his fourth appearance in the tournament. He did win a match uh, 2019. He actually beat Mark Allen, who was then defending champion. wide open isn't it I put a little thing on Twitter yesterday asking people who they thought was going to win and every single name in the draw was mentioned by somebody obviously Judd Trump's had a great season Mark Allen himself has had a good season Ronnie is always dangerous but you could kind of make a case for anybody with that hitting the jaw of the pocket this way you completely lose control of the cue ball now, I think sometimes with the Masters players that have not been in much form um, play without the pressure of ranking points it's kind of something that's been said for years but there's definitely some truth in it which kind of points to someone like Neil Robertson having a good run he's been in terrible form but I uh, guess we'll just see how that all pans out. It isn't always the form player that uh, goes on to win it. And that's very true. I mean, it's been an outlier at times. You remember Steve Davis when he won it the third time. He was sort of thought Bingham a few years ago sort of hadn't been in much form. Even last year, Judd Trump had had a poor season until he won it. The last world champion, the reign, last reigning world champion, that is, to win this title was Ronnie O'Sullivan a decade ago, 2014. He won the World Championship the year before. There we are. Well, it, a lot of these people have had uh, these tickets for a long time because they do go very quickly. So they've been looking forward to this for many months, I'm sure. This is the venue, of course, where the World Darts Championship took place either side of Christmas. Luke Humphreys beat Luke Little, the 16-year-old, in the final. Very raucous crowds there. It's always a little different for the snooker, although they can be quite vocal at times in a different way. Well, 
Well, this is what I was saying. The safety is going to have to be good, and Lazowski's wasn't. So, Russell has his second chance in the frame. I think Ping the ball. attention of the snooker crowd is a little more wrapped up in the action than, <laughs> than some of the people that go to the darts. I think he put a lot into the pot there, which slightly took his mind off getting behind the next red perfectly. He's all right. So. But it'll be a good shot to get onto a colour from this red. Plenty of reds that he could collide into on the way through. may not be too bad, badly on this ping to the top right-hand pocket. If he's dead straight, you'd think that he would strongly fancy to knock it in and keep the break going. <laughs> Chance to put it together a, a good break here, a sizable significant early break 40. sometimes those shots look even easier when you're right behind the line of them 50 mm, that's not Luca good Russell, 15. it's a delicate little shot she expected him fully to get but that kind of almost underlines the point he was trying to make before the game that his confidence is not at an all-time high well Six. I think these are the two of the most liked players on the tour, not only from their fellow pros, but by the people that watch the game. And everyone was thrilled Seven. when Luca Brussel became world champion just because it was good for the game. And of course, if Jack was to lift something major, that would be. Equally the case, he's very popular. Beautiful player. No silverware, which we know and we've spoken about too many times, I guess. But when he's good, he's very good. Well, he must already sense a chance in this opening frame. It's well. And in the match in general, with Brussel having had a couple of good chances that didn't come to much. 13. It's not a good angle on the blue, not to get onto a red. You're going to finish the wrong side of the blue almost a little further. This way would be better. You have to pump this around the angles, this cue ball. And still not on a red particularly easily. 80. a bonus to land on the pink like that. I can't imagine that's the ball he played on from that red. Oh. Wouldn't want to be on the receiving end of that. <laughs> it's such a big building this is and 
do get flies and we've had wasps before now. In fact, one year, one of the referees, Ben Williams, he caught a wasp in his hand, in his hands, and the inevitable happened, he was stung. Well, a little bit of a break in the concentration, but this is a quite an important shot if you can land on the black nicely here. 26. It's a beautiful little cannon. He has pushed the red a little close to the black spot. See, the red just goes up to the left of the black spot, so when he pots the black, he may not very easily be on that red. So he played on the bottom red. So now the big shot of uh, this one, a 34 point lead, would not count for a great deal if he was to miss this. 33. So the pink and Brussel needs two snookers. And of course it was a pink that Brussel missed to the opposite middle. That was the end of his visit. 40. There'll be no playing for the snookers. He did say, Brussel, and I read one of the interviews he did pre-tournament, and he said, I do feel like I have a target on my back, which, of course, you do as world champion. Suddenly 43. everyone wants to raise their game against you. 45. Yeah, well, of course, the, the thing about that is all very true, isn't it? but you think of all those champions that have won multiple titles, you know, the Hendry era, Davis before, and, of course, now the greats. I mean, they've 48. all had the same target on their back, but they've coped with it well enough. It's something that uh, you have to do, I suppose, out there. And uh, Luke will have to come to terms with it. 52. Well, that's why they're the great champions, because they can do that. He had a couple of chances. That's the worst thing here. He did have chances. He didn't take them. 57. So the first frame of the 2024 Masters has been won by Jack Lazowski. 63. This is the 736th match in Masters history. It's a rich history. It's a title everyone wants to win. And Lazowski has taken the opening frame. Off and running then at the Ali Pali for another year. Lazowski leads Brussel 1 0. Talents, great talents, Luca Brussel. And this man, Jack Lazowski, was won the first frame. Spent. Christmas out in Macau, playing in one of the exhibition events there. Very uh, lucrative it was as well, and a nice... As went out there, they said they were very well uh, looked after. A bit of a different sort of Christmas for them, but doing what they were enjoying, which was playing snooker. Thank you. This Joe Lazowski to break. A hush descends on Alexandra Palace, frame two gets underway. Best of 11. Yeah, it's it's so tough to get in the top 16 now. And Lazowski, looking down the list of players, of course, he's the only one who's not won a ranking event. But he's been very consistent. He's gone deep in tournaments. He's earned his place here that way. Goodness, that's not a good shot. And I was surprised he went for it because... He took it on 100%, knowing that he was going to leave plenty, and he has. And he got nowhere near the pot. One. I don't like the early signs. It's a long match, and it's still only very early in frame two, but I don't get good vibes from Luca Brussel here. And Jack needs to pounce on any early errors or early nerves. 
Eight. To take this on, are you leaving absolutely everything? No. He has. Leaving the interview with Rachel beforehand, a last question, are you excited? No, he said. <laughs> Not great, great to hear that, is it? Before playing in one of the biggest tournaments in the sport. I think it's one thing to play down your chances. And uh, often many, many a player has done that, almost playing mind games with themselves 60. or their opponents. But you'd like to hope he'd be excited to be here. Goodness, this is a, as good as it gets for a snooker professional. A very proud moment to play in this, especially as world champion. Walking out there. 70. <laughs> That's enough. No applause, but he'd be happy. He's ploughed through the bunch. Kibble had a bit of extra zip on it. Nothing wrong with that. I don't know if you can, if it's straight enough to run through and be on the black, because he'd, if he could play on the black, it would be the best ball, actually, with the... It's quite difficult to play on a lower-value colour. Kibble's bouncing here. 25. Not bad. Again, slightly the wrong side of the blue. Thirty one. So one key shot here from colour to red might be enough to take him into a very strong position in the frame. I don't know if that's the shot, though. Where's his next red going to come from? 34. the end of break and it's going to be a big safety shot that he has to play here well he hasn't taken on anything complicated at all he'd be annoyed there because he was in with a good chance in that frame he got in with a nice opportunity yeah when you're on top as he has been for a frame and a bit you want to stay there obviously Russell struggling a little early on. It's not bound to continue. That's a dreadful shot. That really is. I mean, you do not give someone like Lizowski this sort of shot with his hand on the table. Well, he can what? miss anything in this game. And try not to criticise players for that, but that last safety shot was very poor. Yeah. It... As I say, when he walked out, I thought he looked tentative, and that's kind of how he's played so far. Just not feeling good at all. Six. Seven. Of course, this is an event with absolutely no hiding place, just one table. Over 2,000 people in a sellout crowd, all eyes on you. 14. Fifteen. Well, Rob Spencer. <laughs> Sort of dealing with 
his own sort of bush tucker trial there, isn't he? He's trying to get rid of all these insects and flies or whatever. Twenty two. <coughs> Twenty three. Yeah, I think breath is he Rob trying to keep up with the, the, the game and also all the the other things that are going on out there. One thing that you can see from this match already though, Jack has settled a lot better than Luca. Not just because good. he's one nil up and a few in front here, good few in front here. But Jack has got himself into the match quickly. 31. And he's on the brink. This is frame ball and the red will guarantee a 2 nil lead. Real concern 36. for Brussel. He's missed a couple. He missed a long red in this frame by a mile. He played a terrible safety to let Lazowski back in. One of those sort of 36. matches where you just want to start again from frame one. Forty-four. Fifty-one. I think it's safe to say that Jack is suited by an open game. Same might apply to Luca Bussell, but uh, he don't really want to give Jack good chances because he really can romp away with a match. We've seen it enough times. Many a player has been on the wrong end of that. 58. 58. Well, there's just enough on for a century, 59. and if he does make it, it'll be a milestone for Jack Lazowski. It'll be his 300th. What a stage to make it on if he can do it. Sixty-six. Seventy-three. Seventy-five. Well, you think back to the safety shot that uh, first of all. Jack played, he didn't try anything, and he actually gave Luca the chance to put Jack Lazowski in a lot of trouble. 78. Well, playing up to bulk, but it was a very weak shot from Luca Brussel, and he really has paid the penalty. Yeah, and Lazowski, if anything, only grown in confidence, striking 86. the ball very nicely. He would be the 27th player to have made 300 centuries in competition. It's quite a, an elite list to be 87. on. 87. 93. He's taken advantage well and truly of the Brussel mistake. Jack, Jack Lazowski's 300th century in tournament play, just underlining the extent to which he's taken early control here. 2-0, concern for the world champ. Well, the body language reflects the start that Brussels made. Nice struggle so far. And Lazowski has grown in confidence. He made 100 exactly to go with the 70 in frame one. So Jack Lazowski on top right now. 2-0. Of course, it's best of 11. There's plenty of time. But Brussels, you fancy, needs an easy starter. He needs to get his hand on the table. His highest break only 15 so far. Try and settle into the match. But... It's already looking like a struggle for him because of how well Lazowski's playing as well. We'll see. The next couple of frames before the interval seem big. Needs to get on the scoreboard, have something to, to build on, get a foothold in the match.
let's see how he fares here in frame three. Thank you. Thank you. The third frame, Luca Brissell to break. Well, that's a strange old break, plain ball. There's some sort of applause for it, but I don't think you see that break very often. I think Eddie Charlton used to break off like that many years ago. Almost he refused to put a lot of side on shots, but uh, he did get a smattering of applause. But he did leave Jack that opportunity, which has kind of given him in a roundabout way his own chance. Well, let's just really see if we can work out what kind of form he's in, as Dave said. Just winning a frame early would just give him something to to aim at, really, in this match. Oh, brilliant. That's brilliant. A couple of good shots. You never rule Five. out that Luca Brussel is just a few minutes away from playing great stuff. My worry was more Six. his demeanour, really, than anything else so far, but this might change it if he gets going here. Well, I know one thing, Neil, but the only time I suspect he's compared to Eddie Charlton in any way. Very different player from a different <laughs> era, wasn't he? Very true. Now, the, the plain ball break, which seemed to go almost unnoticed, but is often you might see a player do that if they've lost all confidence in using side or anything else well I think this visit might tell us quite a bit because you know he's got the black on its spot as the red just drops <laughs> he's got a few reds to go out he can build a nice lead here just get a bit of table time if nothing else oh never in doubt didn't want to hit that red on the way through that will annoy him. He might still be on one. 21. To his relief, he is. 22. Very interesting shot, wasn't it? And uh, I guess he's a bit unlucky, but unconventional to play around that through the gap between brown and yellow, yes. But uh, to play to open the reds in that way is unusual. That red, I think, will go. He's not interested in it. Look at Rassal. 27. Well, just 27. I mean, a few shots ago, he seemed to be perfectly placed. I think the point you made is right, though, Dave, in that, uh, you know, while we know that they're very attacking players, the safety aspect of it will certainly come into play. And that's a what? brilliant shot. And to underline the point, Jack's last safety shot left Luca with his hand on the table, which he mustn't do. Well, this has got to make him feel good. Look at that. What a pot. But now needs to follow it up with something significant here. Oh. 
a really poor someone. shot and he knew it straight away. The angle he had on the green was not ideal because you are sort of screwing towards that left centre, but you've got ways of stopping that happening. The only thing I would say is that he's left an awkward situation here. Jack, ball in. He doesn't want to miss this. This is leaving Luca Brackett back straight in, I think. Well, he didn't miss it. Just of the black nail pots looks tight. And it will go. Wow. Well, it's very early in this match. I think the Jack needs to polish off this frame as well. Eight. It's starting to look a little one-sided. I don't like the body language of the world champion particularly, what I've seen. No, I think what's changed for Brussel is it, it seemed to become world champion. He sometime, somehow managed to play without pressure, but since becoming world champion, he's clearly under pressure. He's exalted status and he's not had the results this season. Eleven. It's a good shot then. Playing nicely on the red. A few mutterings from Luca. Well, look, he, well. we don't know how his season is going to unfold from here, Luca Bussell, but he wouldn't be the first first time world champion to find it really tough in the year that followed. You can think of a number of them that have done that. Often have gone on to have a good run at Sheffield. Ken Doherty, when he won, he had a poor Eight. season. All of the next season until that world championship where he got to the final again. 19. <clears throat> Twenty-six. Twenty-seven. In the meantime, of course, Jack Lazowski has got to do what he does. Just keep scoring, keep that cue ball under control, and punish his opponent. He didn't know that he was going to finish on the black here, but I think he deserved to. 35. No doubt when he's playing his best, he's absolutely sensational to watch. But sometimes it, it, it's not that he dips a level, he dips several levels. I mean, at the, in Belfast this season, he seemed to be playing really well. Got to the semis and was completely outplayed by Chris Wakelin, 6-1. Forty-three, but he's clearly settled here. Looking to press on for three nil. Oh no, that's an awful shot. How has he finished there? Of all the places, forty-nine. That was very surprising. It's almost impossible to finish the wrong side of that red and not be on anything. He's going to have to play the plant, but there's a. You shouldn't be there in the first place. What a recovery. Did <laughs> put the cue ball in a fairly safe place from it. <laughs> he looks to have dug himself out of bit of a hole that he self-inflicted. Red high value colour and the frame is his. 54. That green was some shot, wasn't it? Because he had to get the green, playing back down for the red. Lasowski needs this black and Brussel needs a snooker. 
Bechdel's in serious trouble. He was nicely in, wasn't he, early on in this frame? It looked like it might be the start of something. But nothing is happening for him. 62. Yeah, I mean, he played that poor positional shot, but in general, Luca's biggest problem here is that Jack Lazowski is growing in confidence. Sixty-nine. Lazowski's average shot time seventeen seconds. Pot success, as you see, ninety-eight percent. Yeah, he's playing 17. really well. Seventy-four. Cheers. Seventy-eight. Eighty-three. So a big frame coming up. The last before the interval. Brussel desperately needs it. You feel now the match completely 89. running away from him. Otherwise, Lazowski feeling great. He's made a century exactly, and he's made ninety-six there. In full control now. Halfway to victory in no time at all. Just thirty-eight minutes. This match head-to-head -head at Alexandra Palace in the first match of the 2024 Masters. Luca Brussel and Jack Lazowski, and it's Lazowski firmly on top. Three-nil he leads. His pot success is at ninety-eight percent. He's made breaks of seventy, a hundred, and ninety-six, and he's uh, playing great stuff. But he's getting in off the back of Brussel errors. So Brussel is kind of opening the door. And then it's help yourself time. And Jack Lazowski is settled right from the off in this match. Let's see. One more frame before the interval. Can Luca Brussel get on that scoreboard? We don't see many whitewashes these days in this tournament. But if, if he's 4-0 down at the interval, then that is looming. Yeah, I think that last frame Thank will be you. the one that hurts him. Because he really was in first with a good chance. Jack Lazowski to break. So it's 3-0, Lazowski looking to press on in the last frame before the mid-session interval, and Brussel just looking to put something together. His highest break, the world champion, is just 27 so far. I guess it's, he's a little unlucky to put the red out of the pocket, but he did miss the part in the first place. Well, yeah, this is a shot again that Dave was speaking about, and uh, yeah, I think he was a bit unlucky. He didn't get very close to the initial part. Has he got any angle on the red to de de develop the black here? Four. Well, he's got a slight angle. Can he force the red away from the black? That's next to it. Yes. Five. And a nice shot from colour to red to make that possible. Thirteen. Well, here's a golden chance to open the bunch, and he's very good at it, Lazowski. I will say one thing, the Reds are very tightly packed together, which might deter him from playing the shot. But the angle on the black is perfect to go into them.
think all things considered, he might just about take that. He's on the red to left middle, thin. 20. In contact. Keyboard down towards the black. No. 21. Played it. On a, a choice of colours instead. Now, what a chance again here. Goodness, this really is a golden chance, which he's made possible, I think, from a couple of good recovery shots. 25. Cheers. 26. Such a big tournament, this it really is one where you can make your name if you win it. Snooker fans out there will have so many memories of the decades of this tournament. 50th staging. Of course, the trophy is named in honour of the, the much-missed Paul Hunter. He won it three times, all in deciders after making comebacks. In fact, 20 years since his last victory over Ronnie O'Sullivan. 29. Lazowski has been in six ranking finals, yet to win one of those. But if he won this, then that's an absolute career high right there. Bit early to start talking about that, but he's a heavy, heavy favourite, certainly to win this match. 35. Thank you. 36. Yeah, I thought he'd just uh, take that opportunity to move a red into play. You know, there's one thing about Lazowski, he's a lovely player. You know, he's a, someone that you just enjoy watching. Makes the game look easy. There's a bit of O'Sullivan about him without any of the silverware, any of the titles. That sounds an odd thing to say, but just the ease in which he does it is what I'm referring to, not much else. Forty-three. Interesting decision here. I mean, he could comfortably go into those four reds and the red next to it, but at this stage of the frame, does he really want to? He's just wondering whether he could win the frame without opening those four reds up. No, that's fine. We played it in a good way, actually. Always to be on the red to the right middle. 50. 51. So just needs to press on now. And this is about as one-sided a match as you'll see so far. There's not a stat that can be put up that will please Luca Purcell. I think this was his worst fear coming into this match, Purcell. That he wouldn't start well, that he would give off bad vibes. And his opponent would 54. sort of march all over him. And, and that's exactly what's happening here. Yeah, he needs one more red. It should be 4-0. What a nightmare start for the world champion. 
62. Chance for a second century. There'll be a lot of discussion, I'm sure, about Brussel, but Lazowski is playing superbly. That's the other side of it. 69. Well, it's three snookers. Jack Lazowski, 69. So it's not quite done yet, but it's looking very much like 4-0. Well, he's just got to take it down to one red left. I think the ideal red would be the one right next to the pink. And then, of course, the attempt to lay a snooker and possibly achieve a free ball. We have seen it happen, haven't we, a few times this Eight. season. And I saw something extraordinary in the week at the Championship League. Mark Selby lost a frame after his opponent. It was Chris Wakelin needed two snookers. So, can be done against even the best. Nine. Well, he's played a pretty good shot there. <laughs> Just land behind that bottom red of the two. So it could get interesting still from here. Red, black, absolutely nailed on snooker. But then 60. it would be a question of where we can put the red. Next to a bulk colour. 17. Would be ideal. That's not a very good shot to finish there, though. The one place it's not easy to finish nicely on the red, it's a poor shot. Want to be straight on the black, then screw to the left of the red and, and get the snooker that way. Absolutely not what he wanted. 24. Anywhere but there. Look at Brissell. 24. Yeah. <laughs> Problem is. Leaving the red where it is, he's, he's never going to leave the free ball here. Jack is just not going to make that mistake, even if he doesn't make contact with the red. Together, you feel that it's not going to be that difficult. This two cushions, yes, and this does not help, does it? The sales cause, yeah, he missed a chance, didn't he, with that red below the pink? Well, that surely completes wow. a pretty miserable so start to, to proceedings for the I'm world the champion. Fight. This match has only been going 50 minutes and he is deep in trouble as they head to the interval. But credit to Jack Lazowski. He's made breaks of 70, 100, 96 and 69. And he is two frames away from a place in the quarterfinals of the Masters. He leads Luca Brussel by four frames to nil. In their seats, they're not, you, maybe the not frame. sure how much more snooker they're going to see. It only took 50 frame. minutes for Jack. 4-0 lead over Luca Brussel. Has that 17-minute interval made any difference, given Brussel a chance to get out of the arena, collect his thoughts? It's a tall order because he hasn't played well yet. It could happen. He's going to have to start clearly in this frame. But there's the stats for Lazowski. 97% on the pot success already lining up a long red here at the start of frame five. Well, this is what Brussel needs. He needs Lazowski to miss a few. 
but then it's up to him to try and put something together this afternoon. Yes, I, I couldn't rule out a, a comeback, but you'd have to see a slightly different mindset from Luca Brussel, I think, to the one we saw in the first four frames. If I'm honest, well, and I'm a massive Luca Brussel fan, he didn't look like he particularly wanted to be there. And Jack shouldn't be ignored, it played very well. But I think he got good vibes from his opponent who was struggling. But there's plenty of time, not first to, to five, so you've got a little bit of breathing space if you're Luca Brussel. This is the break-off shot. He's obviously so. had issues with it. Alan pointed something out about that, pushing on to the ball with side, because it's, he broke off in the third frame plain ball, which is very unusual to see. Eight. So that would underline Alan's point, I think. Watching Luca Bussell when he is playing well is a, a joy to behold in the same way the man he's playing is. So the crowd would love to see a comeback. I think most people would. Yeah. 15. Very hard to judge that, wasn't it? Off the bunch to be on the black. So the break ends early, I'm afraid. And Luca's almost back to his chair before 15. the ball stopped rolling. Yeah, I mean, I was thinking, it. obviously, at the Crucible, he was known for his comebacks, wasn't he? Obviously, much longer matches, multi-sessions, but 10-6 down to O'Sullivan, 14-5 down to see John Wheat. More time, I guess, in those matches to get stuck in. This one, he's two frames from defeat. Well, in the World Championships, I mean, CGR, we spent the first two and a half sessions completely mauling Luca Brussel, didn't he? He was sensational. It didn't feel like Luca did that much wrong, but he was just witnessing something unbelievable. It's been a little different to that so far this afternoon. Well. I think the bunch are going to be open here. That's fine. That's absolutely fine, in fact. We've got so many reds here to choose Three. Well, ideally, the, the red below the black would be the one, if he could land on that, it would open up the black, everything would come into play, but it's not so simple to get that positional shot from there. He's played on it, though. Yeah, it's OK, but it's not ideal, as you can see. It's useful to move the red, but positionally, it's a real problem. I don't know if he's in the mood to refuse it, though. It just looks like there's trouble here. The red can be missed. And that cue ball just careering into all these other reds. They've got no idea where they're going to finish. Eighteen. <laughs> well, I mean, 
if the black goes in here, if the black goes in, then that last shot is terrific. But if the black doesn't, it's another frame going against him. Uh, that's very good. <laughs> Fabulous shot on the red, but didn't he take a risk? That's how he plays. 25. Well, has that one shot maybe just given Brussel supporters a bit of hope? Time sort of stood still, didn't it? Everyone was watching all the balls, seeing where everything would go. Would it be on a colour? It wasn't. Bearing in mind, he's 4-0 down the easiest black, but he knocked it in. And now what a chance to get his first frame on the board. Yeah, I didn't quite know where to look with all those reds going off like ants, weren't they, in all different directions? 33. But you're right, that could be a moment. The moment he, right now, a frame needs 30. to be chalked up and not much else does count, but with Luca, it's almost the manner in which he does it, which is crucial. Yeah, but what it does for his own confidence as well, which, let's be honest, was very low pre-interval. Thirty-nine. It's already, of course, his highest break of the match. Needs to press on, though. A couple more reds needed. Forty. And he'll get a good cheer from this crowd. They've paid their money, as I say. They've, they've had the tickets for months and months. They want to see a good match, a close match this afternoon. Yeah, a chap sent me a message earlier on, on the social media to say that he... He got his tickets exactly a year ago when the last year's event was taking place. So you're absolutely right. People have had these, this day saved for a long time. Well, that is frame ball. So, well, we may look back at that one shot scatter in the reds later as the moment things turn around. We'll see. 53. The main thing is he has finally put something substantial together. 54. Yeah, I mean, just the last thing on that shot. I mean, you can miss the pot. I mean, so many different ways a red could have got into a pocket or got in the way. Obviously, if a red had gone in the pocket, it would have been okay, but nothing went safe. Could have hit a 59. colour, knocked that in. But none of that happened. And he became world 60. champion by playing this very creative, sort of very free flowing game. And I'm pleased to see him get something in this match, because I wouldn't like to have seen him beaten 6-0. 67. No, and if he can keep it up, he can put pressure on Zowski. And who knows where this could finish up. We've seen a lot of turnarounds in this tournament, in lots of tournaments down the years, of course. <laughs> 72. And out of nowhere, I know the green's safe, but he does have a chance to make a century. Seventy-eight. Eight. Well, there was. <laughs> yeah. That doesn't quite count, I'm afraid, but that is what he needed. A one visit to win a frame. 80 from Luca Brussel. He's on the scoreboard. Lazowski's lead is reduced to 4 1. Nice in the best of 11 at the Masters as a player won from 4 0 down. So history's against him, but Luca Brussel at last came to the party in that fifth frame, the break of 80. Highlighted by that wonderful shot to get the Reds into play. We'll see. Remember, it's uh, first to six to reach the quarterfinals. Well, as Neil said, there'd be people here who had the tickets for a year, and of course you don't know who you're going to see, but what you do know is you're going to see great players because it's the top 16 in the world after the UK Championship. Obviously, Brussel was always going to be there. Lazowski is actually 16 as it stands now. He didn't qualify for Germany, so he won't be in Berlin, but Thank you. he's still his favourite to progress here. Jack Lazowski to break.
Well, suddenly things are changing, and look at that, he's landed plumb on the black as well. Indeed. It was a good pot, but positionally, he didn't know a lot about it. Sometimes when you chance your arm, good things happen. Eight. Nine. That's fine. 16. Again, risky. And on a, a different Seven, day, maybe to knock the red in, but I don't think he would have deserved that. And this, what, for something sizable in a break. Clearly 20. decided to have a go, isn't he? And took the opportunity immediately to get more reds into play. 25. It just got awkward queuing here a little bit on this with the red next to, or up and to the left of the keyboard. Also, there's an insect fly, floating around above the table. And using the rest maybe is the good idea. Well, it the sky's the limit as to what could happen here because you wouldn't see the ball's better placed early in a break. Well, we're sort of tiptoeing around it, aren't we? He's on blacks, is what we're saying. And here's the thing about the Masters. There's 30. only ever been three maximums. They've all been made by non-British players. Kirk Stevens of Canada, Ding Junhui of China, Marco Fu of Hong Kong made the last one nine years ago. Yeah, it's not as if he'd be taking a liberty playing on them the black because I think it's the Four. easiest ball to play on at the moment. Four, two. So I anticipate you know, pursue this for as long as you can. Brussel has made 49. one maximum in competition. He was at the Championship League six years ago. No audience at all there. This is very, very different. If you could play on the red just below the pink and, and free the pink up, I know that he's not going to be taking the pink, but it would be a good red to get out of the way. And is he straight enough on this? 56. He's not quite got the shot. Fifty-seven. What a chance. I mean, this is the most golden chance of a one four seven break. I think you could ever wish to see. From a man who pre interval couldn't make a thirty break, how things have changed. He's just loosened the, the shoulders 64. a bit, hasn't he? And could be very, very special indeed. There's no specific prize 65. for a maximum, 15,000. But now if you make more than one in the three Triple Crown events, you do get 146. There, but uh, he recovered it nicely. 72. 40 years since that one by Kirk Stevens, and it's still vivid, isn't it, in the memory? These things are what you're often remembered for. Yeah, it, it, I mean, he almost spoiled for choice, wasn't he? But now he's just slightly out of position, but he could play a different red. He's going to run it through and be high on the black. Oh, the frame's not even oh. one. Goodness me. What a shame. 72. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? Yeah, OK, the maximum, which he wanted, clearly. But, as you say, he's not won the frame yet.
Yes, it, it kind of wasn't a simple plant to the middle with the... He had to hit the wrong side of the red or the top side. Well, this was a great shame. They could have played other shots instead. So he's now secured the frame at least and the, uh, the maximum will have to be put on hold. But the match is certainly livening up a little bit now. It's looking uh, almost like the match Eight. we expected from the outset. Nine. Well, there'll be more chances for maximums as long as you're still here. Eleven. Twelve. Nineteen. Of course, that World Championship defence is coming round, isn't it? It's only actually three months away. He's the only player who knows when he'll be playing. But that Saturday morning, of course, the defending champion 25. will be walking out. Twenty-six. Introduced by Rob Walker and all the memories coming back. That's all to come right now. He's in a fight with this man who made all the running pre-interval. It's a quick match, as you can see. Average frame time, 12 minutes. No maximum, but at least he's won the frame. 30. That was uh, the first shot. And uh, the lovely kiss to stay on the black. Luca Purcell, 31. So Luca Purcell, OK, didn't make the 147, but he's won the frame. And the match suddenly has got a lot closer. And he is playing a lot better. Zowski's lead is now cut to just 4-2. Luca Purcell is such a, a distinct and fascinating snooker player. We saw it in Sheffield last year. We've seen it there in a couple of frames. All not lost yet. 4-0 down. He was not playing well. 4-2. He has played well for two frames. Has uh, kept Lazowski out. And he's obviously hoping to press on. And if he can win this frame, then it is anybody's. Lazowski has to have good thoughts about how well he played to lead 4-0. Let's be honest, he didn't get much of a look in in that last frame. He did, uh, of course, come to the table after the Brussels broke down, but it was a bit all or nothing, the shot he played. Thank you. The seventh frame, Luca Brussels to break. He's definitely having a few issues with his break-off. That's worked out well, but he certainly threw the cue ball wide off the bunch. So, for whatever reason, something... Is bothering him when it comes to using side. It's a strange old game, isn't it? Jack's very subdued now. He's had nothing really to go at. <laughs> Hasn't potted the ball since he led 4-0. And uh, the nature of snooker is that things can turn around. But Luca will have to keep applying the pressure because he's still a couple of frames down. It's a healthy lead still for Jack Lazowski. One he'd have very much taken before the match started. Well. Seven. Eight. Lovely shot. Very well controlled. He knew exactly what he was doing there, playing on the loose red and just dislodging a few others on the way. I think it does spot. It's just a question of getting getting it in there, the pink. 
I don't think it's tight as to whether it actually goes on the spot. 14. Twenty two. Twenty-three. I had a wide area to play on a red there. That was uh, quite a good shot from Lazowski. Might look at the red to right corner as a left-hander. Reach it more easily. Twenty nine. Thirty six. Thirty-seven. Of course, the match has changed from Lazowski's perspective because now he's seeing his opponent playing well. So 42. the onus is on him to just hold him off. As I say, plenty for him, of course, to be positive about in the way that he took that 4-0 lead. But you're right, though, because now that uh, Luca Purcell is looking more dangerous, this break, he's almost coming under more scrutiny, Jack, and he's so far taken these nicely. He'd be pleased to make a, a sizable break here, I think. Now he has been pressurised a little bit. 43. He's looked cool, hasn't he, this afternoon? You know, he's not made really any glaring errors. But obviously, as the match gets closer to the finish line, that's when the pressure can come to bear. 49. Fifty. Chat Matt Tresco has put together a Masters Almanac full of interesting information, one of which was that the, the first final in 1975, the average frame time between John Spencer 58. and Ray Reardon was 35 minutes. In this match so far, it's just over 11. 11. Oh dear, oh dear. Up until then, it was all going swimmingly, but that's been a, a terrible shot. He over-screwed quite a lot. Play between the gap that is the, the brown and, and green, but didn't make the gap. And he hasn't made it over the line in the frame either yet. No, he didn't make sure, did he, that he got topside of blue in the previous shot, which contributed. So, it's not over yet, this frame. 63. Well, he can get through to it comfortably and run it round of two cushions for the black. Well, well now, this is uh, an interesting juncture of the match. Because it would hurt Jack Lazowski if he didn't win this frame. And you can see that he's already 
getting a little bit hot under the collar that he hasn't. Luca Brassel won. Well, hard to describe that shot because it's all about the extra pace he put into it. And that cue action did not stand up to that shot very well, quite honestly. The cue was up in the air. It's the shots where you hit the ball hard that you really do sort of rely on your technique. It's another frame yeah. that's gone for Brussel. Another one on the ball for Lazowski. Beautiful. This is a frame that could have gone away from him. And had Brussel cleared up or at least got into a position where he could win that frame, who knows? But it's gone. And um, Mazowski on the brink at 5 2. Yeah, he's just stemmed the flow by winning this frame, hasn't he? Just before things got a little too interesting for his liking. You know, by getting this frame back, it, you know, at 4 0 up, you, you wouldn't mind being 5 2 up that much. You know, you're not, your Six. opponent has not really made much inroads. And uh, more worryingly, Luca has missed a couple of shots where I think his technique has let him down a bit. Certainly that black, he'll be thinking about that. He forced it and hit it 22. quite poorly, actually. Key went up in the air. 23. It's been a very interesting match, as we thought, but it's mostly all about... This man, Jack Lazowski. Jack Lazowski, 23. Well, it's the third frame in a row that's been under 10 minutes. Crucially, it's been won by Jack Lazowski. He'd lost the previous two, but he's now one away from a place in the quarterfinals, leading 5-2. But from 4-0 to 4-2, and he had half a chance there to clear up in the last frame. It didn't happen. Lazowski did enough. 5-2. He needs one more to reach the quarterfinals here at Alexandra Palace. An early start for the Masters this year. So many snooker fans and I've been looking forward to this all over Christmas. The darts uh, have left the stage. That was a memorable event, the PDC World Championship. And now it's, uh, well, we almost went from 180s to 147s, didn't we? Of course, uh, Brussel had that chance a couple of frames ago. Now he needs to dig in, try and put some pressure on. If he gets a chance, of course, that's not guaranteed. Thank you, the eighth frame. Jack Lazowski to break. Well, it's been a speedy affair. The average frame time now is 11 minutes and a couple of seconds. How much longer? Lazowski needs one more. You know, I think there was a sort of a big Brussel move, wasn't there, from 4 0 to 4 2, and it was stopped in its tracks a little bit by losing that last frame. Whether he can regroup and put this man under pressure, I don't know. Not sure quite how well Luca is playing. It's pretty obvious that Jack Lazowski is looking dangerous. 
in the frames he's won, the chances he's taken, he's been he's been good today. One break of a hundred to show for it, but I think uh, in the overall standard he's put up, he's been pretty good. Well, you heard the sort of gasp there <laughs> from the audience. You kind of fancy him for these, hand on table. Yeah, I'm not sure how much damage he's done when the ball's come to rest. It looks as if it, they've uh, they've all gone safe when they may not have done on a different day. That's a very aggressive defensive shot, isn't it? Getting Reds into play, got the cue ball safe, opening the game up. Foul. No mess. Look at myself for. Looking for a very thin contact, maybe to get in behind the yellow himself there, but either way, the good news for Jack Lazowski is he didn't leave anything to the right corner. He's come around to see those two reds. Are they a plant? And as you, as you can see, certainly not, not a plant, especially from where the cue ball is, top side of the reds. It, not an entirely simple safety shot if he's playing safe. Maybe he's taking this red on. Beautiful. Well, at least he worked out a path to take the cue ball away from the reds in playing it. Nicely done. It looked great from the overhead, the way that he shaped the cue ball back down the table. Now, oh, this is a big one. Well, easy. Jalazowski won. Crowd getting behind the world champion. Yeah, I think uh, it always will support the player trailing. Well. I just wonder if he might try and screw into the red three reds by the black here. He doesn't have to do that. He in fact be part of all to the right corner anyway. But he's kind of played with a lot of freedom. Now the black's on, so he wouldn't play that shot. Six. Well, it isn't great to get from red to colour. Seven. It's a nice shot, although he hasn't got a simple <laughs> shot to follow it up with here. Cuble into the three reds. Oh dear. Oh dear. Not been his afternoon. Look at myself, seven. 
I don't know if he does he look a bit rusty out there. I'm not sure. He certainly hasn't been anywhere near as sharp as he might have been. And a little nudge off the, the black. Mm. Not great. Whoa. We saw the plant earlier, it, it doesn't look very easy at all. He's going to have to catch the first red quite thin. So I think it's a tough shot, this. Thank you. I'm even, not even sure, like you know, whether that was entirely on. Just didn't look right to me. The cue ball above the two reds makes it even more difficult. If the cue ball been down low, maybe the plant was gettable. Eight. That's not worked out too badly at all. Now, I think for Jack Lizowski to get this match won quickly before no. any other strange things happen, Luca just starts to throw his arm at a few and they all go in. Get it won early. Something that great champions have always done, actually, is just when they've got their opponent down, just keep them there. 60. Yeah, and it can be quite anxious, I think, playing first. You know, it's the first match of the event. It's, everyone's excited. But if you can win, Jack Lazowski will have a few days off. He won't be back till Thursday night. You can watch everyone else sweat it out. Cheers, Jack. 70. There was, of course, pressure on both coming in, but the focus was on Brussel because he's the world champion and that's the status he's got and that's why everyone is following his results very closely. Still work to do here for Lazowski. Well, this plant again is not an easy one. Goodness, they're taking on some shots, these two. He is good at plants, though. <laughs> Fell out of position earlier in the match and recovered it with a difficult plant. This time. Not so much out of position, just a tricky little shot to pop the red and get on the next colour. Got to avoid hitting the two reds below the black. 33. <laughs> oh, nice shot. Nicely done. This uh, tried is hard to stay out. Hardest. Forty-one. 
Yeah, I think if you're a fan of Jackson, there's many out there. It's a bit of a thrill ride, isn't it? It's never dull. In his hands as to whether he can mop it up here. 30 in front. 48. Priscell hoping for another chance. It's going to have to come soon. Forty-nine. Well, clearly, the more difficult reds come into play here, because his lead will be thirty-six points when this pots, and then red and whatever colour will still not be quite enough. So he has to try and dislodge one of the safer reds. So the match is not over by any means. 54. 55. Yes, I think what he might do is play on the left-hand red directly because he's a left-handed player. Let's run it down the cushion. And then any colour would be enough if the red goes in. Luca could only tie, even if he doesn't pot a colour. Let's go see this one in, and he's almost there. 61. Mm. Well, I have to say, I'm not, I'm not sure quite where Luca Purcell's season goes from here. He won't be playing 68. in the first of the player series events. He's got German, he's got the Welsh, but he doesn't look like a winner waiting to happen to me. 68. He needs two snookers. <laughs> it wasn't the best last shot from Wazowski, but he's on the brink. He's exuded, a, I think, an air of real confidence. Even the red down the rail, he couldn't wait to play it. <laughs> he couldn't wait to get down and play it. He nailed it, he got the black, and that's why he's 50 in front with 43 on. Just a glimmer, though, that last shot he played. Purcell can pop one of the reds. Try and get the snook on the last one. Yeah, I mean, he knows his next shot should be out of a snooker. And again, go back to what I always say, there's one sort of dream shot here. A difficult Eight. snooker behind the black and the red right up against the colour, which could bring him into the match still. But I'm afraid that is not the shot. Luca Brassell, eight. Even if he has got the snooker, I think he'd be able to swerve round it. <laughs> you know, on the assumption that uh, Luca doesn't win this match, I think he's just got to concentrate on what happens at the World Championships now. Of course, there were chances before then. Big event in China, as I say, the German, which he'd like to do well in. Welsh, but I think all roads will have to lead to Sheffield, where he may play well again. I wouldn't rule that out, but he isn't playing well at the moment. Well, as the bard said, heavy hangs the head that wears a crown, and that is the change status. It's a good position to be in. It means he's world champion. But it also means people raise their game against you. And Jack Lazowski overall has played very well this afternoon. Pot success in the mid 90s. He's had a series of big breaks. He's looked confident. He's come out and he's played his game and it's worked. And Brussel, eight. the world champion, out in round one of the Masters. So, it was up, yeah. so a very entertaining contest. Lazowski made all the running before the interval. He made his 300th career century to lead 4 0. Brussel won a couple, could have made a maximum. But Lazowski finishes it off. He's into the quarterfinals, a 6-2 winner.